We are joined once more by Phil Andrew. He is principal and founder of Pax Group LLC and former FBI special agent. Mr. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us again. Glad to be with you this evening. All right, so so Phil, talk to me. What, do you, what are your initial takeaways uh, from this? And then, you know, the investigation so far, kind of everything that we're seeing on TV, the sound that we've heard so far. What do you what do you take away from that? Well, first, what a terrific response from the first responders to uh, pay attention, to have some situational awareness of what was happening, and uh, respond immediately to begin evacuations. Um, I think that, in part is what uh, spared some uh, further injury and loss of life. Um, the other thing that's very curious is why there, uh, why an RV, and uh, why that time of day, it does seem to indicate that whoever uh, was behind this um, did not want to hurt people or, or, or was mitigating uh, the number of people that could be hurt uh, and, and was very focused on property. Um, this being near the AT&T uh, switching station, um, that could play into this. Um, now there's some indication that um, some uh, human remains are being recovered. How is that involved? Was that a victim? Or was, that, uh, was this done uh, in kind of a murder and then an explosion? All these things are, are things that the investigators are going to be going through minute detail of both the scene and the leads that, that uh well and absolutely uh mr andrew because you know it is interesting that that the blast was so significant but yet you know we just heard from that eyewitness who said that the recording was saying you know do not approach this vehicle so there was you know a warning for people it appears yes and th that could be that they were signaling that they're they're, they're targeting infrastructure um, or it could be that this was some other statement. Um, it has something to do with this area. Clearly, if you wanted to hurt more people, um, you would have done it at a different time and a different place. Um, so there, there, there must be something that investigators will connect with this particular location and uh, in the timing. Well, Phil, talk to us. What is the benefit, really, of, of the FBI immediately taking the lead in this investigation? Because we know they were called in, in rather quickly. Yes. Well, really dating back to a, a similar bombing, uh, the Oklahoma City bombing, which in, included what appears to be a similar car bomb uh, type device, uh, there's been really incredible coordination among local investigative authorities, uh, the ATF and the FBI. In, in situations like this, the FBI is usually the lead investigative agency uh, because of their jurisdiction over terrorism. And the assumption here, anytime that a bomb and a bomb that is uh, directed toward people or infrastructure, that that's going to be related to some sort of international or domestic terrorism. We don't know that now, but investigators will be looking uh, to, to uh, find any evidence of that. But the assumption is, is that you'll need uh, nationwide, perhaps global investigative resources, and that's what the federal government, including the FBI, bring to this. Well, and Phil, talk to us just about getting a handle on a crime scene of this magnitude, because we're talking about an explosion. We know obviously there can be debris everywhere. I know that authorities did lock down the area rather quickly, but how do you get a handle on something that, that can be so large and so massive? Yes, that's always challenging with, with a, an explosion, because every piece of that explosion um, could be part of the evidence. So they are going to be carefully sweeping every inch of that scene and looking for uh, small indicators of what that bomb might have been made of, uh, maybe things that might identify that RV, uh, that might additionally identify anybody else involved. And the truth is, those they can bring a lot of personnel in to help with those sweeps, and they're done incredibly carefully, not just to find uh, clues in terms of catching this person, but also gathering the evidence that will eventually result in their prosecution. All right, and, and Phil, you did talk about that RV. We talked about the fact that this happened on Christmas morning when a lot of people wouldn't be in the area like if it were a normal Friday. So can you talk to us at all about a possible profile of the person or the people 
who may be responsible for this? Well, it's very difficult to say right now. And I imagine that uh, the local authorities and the, the national investigators, that I'm sure that they have considerable leads. One of the things they've asked us to do in, in releasing the pictures of the RV is they've asked, asked the general public to, to, to get involved. Anybody that's seen this vehicle has any indicators of, of who might have owned it, if they saw it filling up or a similar vehicle filling up at a gas station, those folks should call 1-800-CALL-FBI and, and provide those, those details. So um, the, th this is going to take some time. Uh, the, 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 the most difficult part of any investigation is really securing the space, uh, collecting the information, getting the cooperation of any witnesses, and then actually processing all of those leads and that evidence uh, to lead to, you know, catching the person that is responsible for this. Well, and Phil, I know you just touched on this a bit, but, you know, obviously we all have these now. Everybody has their phones. Everybody has their smartphones now. So there, there was a lot of posts on social media, people taking pictures, taking video. Just how crucial are eyewitnesses to this investigation? Well, it, the, the, eyewitnesses are going to be limited because of the, the limited number of people that were on the street. Anybody that has something uh, of the vehicle before it exploded, certainly uh, video that's after is going to be less relevant to trying to, to, to catch the perpetrators. But it, even in, in Nashville and in other cities, there's a number of videos and electronic surveillance that will be collected by investigators. They have may, have, may have driven by somebody's uh, ring doorbell. They may have driven by a gas station that runs 24 hour video. And all of that will go into building a timeline and seeing what other clues might have led to this particular vehicle being parked there, who may have gotten out and, and, and exactly where they went right after that. All right, and Phil, last question for you. And I know we talked about this at 7 o'clock, but is there anything that you can glean from the fact that an RV was used, uh, you know, to foster this explosion? That is curious, but there's a few things that are, are interesting about an RV. It's light. Uh, you can put a lot of load in it. You can hide it from uh, kind of plain view. No one can kind of see what's going on in there. And um, but it, it, it's also a, a sort of unique vehicle that folks will be able to identify um, if they've seen it in other places. It's a little out of place, maybe being in, a, in an urban setting like that. You know, was it parked again? Was it at a gas station? Um, I expect that the general public is going to be able to give some insights as to where this was in the hours and minutes prior to uh, law enforcement being alerted. Yeah, absolutely, because you're right. I mean, that's certainly something that's going to stand out in downtown of, of a city there. So, Phil Andrew, former FBI special agent, we thank you again so much for your time. Thank you.